Okay. Okay, we'll go all the Wilmer City Council work session for Monday, December 4th to order. First off, is anybody from the public that wishes to speak to the council? Seeing and hearing none, first item on the agenda is Rice Robbins Island Park signage. Mr. Holland. Mr. Brizendine. Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, you have your mic on. Information um, about park signage and what we'd like to do moving forward in 2018 as we wrap up the Rice Park project, uh, the Miller Park project, uh, and then um, Robbins Island. As you recall, the Rotary Club this past summer with their um, revenues from the Rock and Robbins concert series have dedicated funds to create a new entrance into Robbins Island Park. Um, we'll tear out the landscaping pieces to the right hand of the in, right hand side of the entry into Robbins Island, and we'll replace it with new shrubbery. Um, new landscaping, and we've got a couple of signs. Uh, one will be Robbins Island Regional Park signage, and then the Rotary Club will also be um, represented in some signage in that planting area. So we've got a couple of concepts in front of you, um, basically mimicking the airport and the um, wastewater treatment plant um, uh, signage, uh, at least from a, a, a block perspective of uh, those signs. Um, we don't anticipate using that type of structure in all the parks, but we think Robbins Island, um, with, the, with the size of that park, that that's a, an appropriate type sign to use at Robbins Island. And then you see the other one um, from Rice Park, just a standalone uh, park that's um, going to be made out of a composite of some sort and, and pretty pretty basic and, and low maintenance is what we're hoping for. So uh, with that, I'd, I'd stand for any questions about signage. Uh, earlier this, this year, we had brought some information together that had some um, potential logo type aspects of it. And uh, through further conversations, we've just deemed that we want to get the park signage um, consistent and uniform throughout the system. And if we decide to do something um, related to logos or things like that at a future date, uh, we can retrofit any signage that we put up there. So I'm um, just looking for approval to start moving forward and getting signage ready to be placed next spring. Stand for questions. Okay, Council, any questions for our Public Works? I'm sorry, our Community Ed and Rec Director. Councilmember Alvarado. Um, who who developed the the concept of these signs, or is, is it something that you came up with, Steve? Um, not, <coughs> not really, because the signage, you know, um, it's just pretty basic signage, at least acknowledging what park it is. Uh, the uh, block format that you see for the Robbins Island is basically mimicking what's already in place at the airport and, and wastewater treatment plant. So just going with a common look of other signage in our community. And it's not that much different from the Welcome to Wilmer signs either. If, if I could add to that, I think the overall design and the size and scope of it, he worked with numerous people for that total design, if that's what your question. I want to add further to that. Personally, I'm not excited about it. Um, I, I think it's, um, I don't know, just kind of um, plain. I heard what you said that you intend to uh, maybe retrofit it um, or change it maybe later on. Is that what I'm understanding? If we decide to incorporate a logo throughout all the signs, then that sign is large enough that we could add the logo to it. The current signage that we have doesn't have logo anywhere on any of the parks existing right now. Uh, or our our main facilities or our parking lot signs. So what I'm attempting to do is to get some uniformity within the signage as a starting point because right now we don't have that. And so over the next year, year maybe two years, we'll slowly start to replace these aging signs and we'll have this uniform size and scope and color and font and then, after we get that complete, if we feel like we want to add 
uh, a logo to it or change our current logo, we can go through that process. But right now, the dilemma that we're in with Robbins Island is that we have uh, someone that, you know, the Rotary Club wants to donate this money and they would like to give it to us, but we haven't been able to get approval over the last couple of months just to even uh, get started on this project. Right, right. Well, anyways, I, um, I understand about the uniformity and, and that sort of thing. Um, it just it seems sort of plain to me. It, it is kind of plain and simplistic in that manner, and a lot of what I'm trying to attempt to do, even with our um, Wilmer welcome signs, we're not going to change out those signs per se, but what we're going to do is we're going to use landscaping and try to enhance the signs with, through landscaping and, you know, with flowers and such in the spring. Mm -hmm. And um, over the next couple of years, if we... Uh, plant some trees and uh, lift up the signs and so that they're more prominent. And then they'll stand out and they'll um, be more attractive. Okay, thank you. Plowman followed by Fagerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the Robbins Island sign, that'll be lit up, won't it? Spotlights or solar lights or something like that? That's a good question, Rick. Uh, as of right now, we, we do plan on uh, the design that we've got for that area would also have three flagpoles. Um, so uh, we do anticipate leaving flags up so there will be electricity that will be pulled in there and there will be some lighting of some sort. Haven't determined what we'll do with this signage itself and whether it will have an encased lighting structure to it or if it will be shined upon it. Okay, because I like this one because the waste treatment plant and the airport similar, so. Rice Park, that is kind of plain, but kids don't go to the park because there's a sign there. They go there for play equipment, so. We think that composite uh, material will be durable as well and, and be able to weather um, in Minnesota weather quite fine as well, so. Councilmember Council Plowman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the the continuity in the the signs. I think that's important for you know brand value and, and marketing and whatnot. I think the county building on Highway 12 also has this design. Is that correct? It, it's similar, but a little different color. Okay. I will also, and you may or may have not seen this sign, but if you go over to the school um, superintendent building. Um, there's a sign there that was constructed, my understanding, by city employees. And they used uh, faux rocks, or maybe they're real rocks, and did the frame uh, so it's more attractive. So that's the other thing that I was talking about is that instead of focusing maybe on the words and uh, the colors, look at the, the framing of it and then the total landscaping to make it pop. Yeah, I was just going to uh, mention that, that there are things that can be done. I mean, this is a good, solid base structure, and it can always be added, to. You can add backlit stainless letters, and you can add logos, and it can even be clad in another, you know, another stone type if we decide to do that. And it, the real money's in the structure, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think if we like the overall <coughs> shape and the structure of it, it can be dressed up in the future. But, yeah, continuity, I think, is important. Thanks for uh, bringing this. Councilmember Meski. I like the design of it too, and I think this one can be retrofitted with if the logo is anywhere. It can even be on the structure itself. I mean, it, it seems to lend itself to that. Um, however, I'm less and less excited about the Rice Park one. That seems less ability to retrofit that. And I know that this the discussions of logo seems more appropriate on our generic parks. This regional park concept I like a lot, and I think you could move with that, with the logos. I just see a, a lack of that opportunity with these other ones. I think we'd have to redo this sign if we're going to do a logo concept. I know that um, Councilmember Nelson is, is away tonight, but she had called me about signs too, and she is very adamant about logos, but um, I don't see a problem with the Robbins Island one. I like that one a lot. I mean, I think you can add that easily to that sign.
So, Mr. Brizendine, um, is there any urgency? I'm hearing some support for the Robbins Island sign, less support for the Rice, Rice sign. Um, is that kind of what you're wanting tonight? I mean, are we on a time frame here? I know that the money from Rotary um, might have a timeline with it. Um, sure, Mayor. Uh, the yeah, the Robbins Island has more of a time constraint. The you know, Rice Park is just one of 35 other parks, in my opinion. The Robbins Island Regional Park is is much different as Swanson Field probably would be because of how big they are and can um, absorb this type of structure on their sites. Um, you know, Rice Park and Miller Park, just from an identification standpoint, uh, will want to move forward at some point, but the urgency isn't there. Um, I think the urgency is to try to start getting away from those green timbers that we're using at some point, but I think uh, the council certainly can um, start having discussions uh, you know, over the course of the next year and decide how to move forward with the re uh, neighborhood parks. Okay. And then I've got a follow-up question as far as the uh, public input and how you sought public input for that. Uh, so uh, brought this to your committee and rec uh, committee, I would guess. Um, how else have we sought public input on that? Uh, to, to be honest, I have not sought a lot of public input into the signage, uh, as I thought the council was still going to have discussions about that uh, moving forward. Um, as for Robbins Island, I, I think uh, you know those of us that sit on the committee uh, for the Rob, uh, Rock and Robbins um, events have, have looked at this and, and think that this is a good look for the entrance into that park. But uh, overall, um, input into the signage have not sought input into that at this time. So, Councilman Alvarado, do you have any comments after hearing those additional comments? Or? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess um, I think it's important that the community has an opportunity to express their, their interest in designing a sign, and I think it's important that we allow them to do that. Um, I I would I would encourage that I I don't have a problem going along with the Robbins Island Regional Park sign I think it's important that uh, if the uh, Rotary wants to share the funding that we proceed that way. Okay. So I need some advice from staff. Then uh, do we want to move up the Robbins Island one uh, to the regular agenda or not? I would request that we move forward with the Robbins Island sign to the regular agenda. Because I'm not hearing support for the Rice sign. Am I hearing that right? Okay. 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 Sounds good. Um, I believe I've seen an email that said to pull the airport management administration agreement, or is that still supposed to be on? No, that, that was to pull the, um, the position description that was okay. inadvertently added. Uh, I didn't get a chance to review that, and so I didn't want er anyone to waste their time reading that. We'll revisit that at a later time. Go ahead. So, um, you want to introduce it? The the topic is the airport management and the administration uh, out at our uh, airport, and recently, as you know, we've had a, an employee that's uh, acting as the airport manager leave the city this week. And uh, so I had a discussion with that employee and with their supervisor, uh, Bruce Peterson, and we talked about different options and, and I got the complete history of the airport uh, and how we've had some issues in the past. and. We talked about the FBO and such, and so Bruce and I met with um, the FBO and the operations um, uh, staff out there that currently uh, run the uh, airport, and we talked about different options. And basically what I'm looking for tonight is just some consensus or just some approval that uh, I would like to go forward with uh, putting an ad in the paper and seeking an airport manager and look at what kind of applications we get and what kind of experience. Because uh, over the last several years in, in Montrose, Colorado, we had a regional airport, a national airport. We had two airports. Um, and then in Missouri, I had a, a local uh, 
recreational airport. So I've had uh, over a decade or more experience with uh, airports, and I've found that an airport manager uh, is one of the best tools to have because they have a vested interest in improving the airport and seeing its expansion. And also, it just seems to have a better working relationship with that type of uh, setup. Having said that, um, after meeting with uh, the owners of the FBO, I was very impressed with them and their experience. And I will say that I kind of had a little turnaround in my opinion, simply because they have a very uh, financial interest in making that airport succeed. And when you have a financial interest in things, you seem to work a little harder to make things happen. But having said that, I expressed to them that I would still like to explore uh, both my options. And they, they did not have a, a disagreement with that. Um, right now we're you know, in a slow period at the airport and we have uh, Mr. Peterson is very capable to fill in in the interim period. So we're not in a rush. The operations agreement does terminate at the end of December but we can continue that past the, the end of this uh, contract period on a month-to-month -month basis. So that will not be a problem. So I guess what I'm asking tonight is if I can get some support and consensus for us to explore uh, hiring an airport manager um, and or maybe entering into a contract um, with the owner of the FBO right now to have them do the management uh, uh, the airport management, uh, um, you know, process and policies and so forth and management. So that's what I'm asking for tonight. And um, Bruce and I are here. If you have any questions about uh, how we want to do that or what's the pros and cons, Mr. Peterson, do you have anything to add to that? Members of the council. Um, City administrator has pretty well defined where we're at. Historically, the airport did operate with a manager. The manager for a time was the FBO with Wilmer Air Service. Uh, we had to split those responsibilities up after the FBO that purchased Wilmer Air Service demonstrated they weren't able to uh, take on the responsibilities of management as well as the FBO. You know, I, I think it's important that the city look at a couple different options, and I, I don't think that we're seeking permission to hire a manager at this time. We want to identify those options, and as part of identifying those options, uh, the administrator and I will meet with the airport commission in the near future and get their their input as well. And but a, a good way to start, I think, is to gauge the market. Um, let's advertise for the position and see what type <coughs> of interest we can generate and. Uh, see what type of candidates and options are out there. Thank you. Councilmember Osmus. Thank you. I saw under the desired qualifications that they was asking for a, a graduate of a four-year airport management program. Who who has something like that? that and we're asking that to get pulled back. That, okay. That, that, but but I'm just I'm just curious that, for people who are gonna apply. Oh, in this area, where where does somebody go you, for in fact there's one of the best schools course. up there in Fargo okay. is one of the best schools in the country. Okay. Um, I guess I I have a couple kids in aviation, so I know <laughs> yeah. some of where the best schools are. But we have there there are a lot of uh, young men and women that are getting those type of degrees and so okay. forth. So there is a, a pool of people with that. Um, however, like I said, I wanted to relook that because right. I, I'm not for sure that that's the qualification that we need uh, for Wilmer. Right. And it, yeah, and I know we were disregarding that part, but I was just thinking for for the pool that we're going to try to draw from. I was just wondering where where in the area would we have um, people that with qualifications, and would there be training in the area? But okay, I wasn't sure if Grand Forks or Fargo had something. Yeah. Saint Cloud does as well. Really. Yes. I've just never heard of anybody believe going for Cato, airport management. And Cato does also. Right. You know? Oh, wow. Both, oh, good. All of those schools own their own planes to train students, uh, not just as pilots, but in the management side of things as well. Hmm. Northland Technical College does as well. And Thief River Falls. Who knew? Exactly. <laughs> Council, Councilman Plowman. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this question is for Mr. Peterson. Um, we haven't had a, a full-time airport manager in the in the recent past. Um, is one of the reasons for that, or maybe you can correct me, is it is it because of the group that we've had with the uh, the operations agreement that has been in place? Um, why haven't we needed a full-time person in, in the recent past for that position? Uh, Mayor Kelvin, Council Member Plowman, members of the council. In 2009, when our last full-time manager left for bigger and better things, um, staff did advocate to retain the manager's position. At that time, it was a decision of the administration and council to look at different options, and that's when they tried to uh, push it to the FBO. Because that didn't work, we split it up among uh, city staff and had an operations contract with Eric's Aviation. That worked okay, except we no longer have the in-house management person. With, with Megan departing at the end of this week, we've lost that part of it. And um, it, it just makes sense to take a look at that full-time manager again. We have an active airport. We have a fairly large airport. We should not overlook that. It, it deserves the attention of the council. and. Uh, we need to make sure that we're getting management services out there the best that we can for the money that the council's got available for that purpose. Okay, can I can I follow up with that? Um, do you think, given the current circumstance with with the FBO, I think you know we were we were through some turmoil with that whole deal, but we're on the other side of it now, and I think things are trending quite a bit quite a bit better, um, at least at airport commissions that. Uh, commission meetings that I've been to and master planning groups and whatnot seems like things are continuously improving um, I'm not opposed to the idea of of you know going going through this and and seeing what's out there um, it's as our administrator mentioned it, it's still a option to potentially negotiate with the FBO and and come up with something that might be workable I think that's a valid option we were already in the process of looking to combine the operations agreement with the FBO agreement because there was a, a very uh, high degree of interconnectedness with Eric's and Oasis Aviation. And um, this really gives the council another opportunity to further combine and strengthen those functions with one entity should they so choose. The only question I have if that is to occur is that there needs to be a real careful delineation of responsibilities and make sure that the lines of communication and reporting to the city are maintained so that we've got uh, a municipal employee that does have the ultimate oversight responsibility, at least as a uh, direct report. Yeah, I, I think that's well spoken. I'll, I'll advocate on behalf of the current um, FBO. I think they're doing a fantastic job, and I think they're a very uh, reliable outfit, and I think we're, like I said, we're trending positively, but I think you're... I think it's duly noted that, you know, the the chain of command, so to speak, up through the city. I think it's really important that we keep that, you know, fresh in our minds too. Just to, uh, uh, well, it's just a good idea, just good responsibility. Well, there are a number of things that happen with uh, DOT, aeronautics, and the FAA that require a municipal employee to sign documents or to uh, take certain actions. So. Whoever's doing this is going to have to uh, be aware of who that main go-to person is at the city level, whether it's uh, an airport manager that the council would assign that responsibility or if it's a contract body that would have a responsibility to answer that to a staff person. One more and then I'm done. Um, in the interim, while, uh, while Megan is gone, we still have that do we have that in place? Whereas if documentation needs to be signed off on and whatnot for uh, compliance, we can do that in the interim? Between the current operations um, agreement or the company that's managing the operations agreement and staff, we will make it through this transition period, yes. Thank you very much. Councilman Schwantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
at first blush, I would think it would be difficult to fill a position for an airport manager at less than full time or without benefits. So I, um, I think that that probably was, is, is going to be an only option for us to find a qualified candidate. But uh, I also agree with Council Member Plowman's comments about having a strong FBO and we're really fortunate to have them. In your conversation with the FBO, was there any discussion whether or not they felt that because they already have staff that is there at the airport and um, and their familiarity with everything, you know, it's not going to take much time for them to be up and running because they already are, basically. Um, would they require, if, if this was awarded to an FBO, would they re require a full-time position or would they be able to do it in less hours than that? It, it would be full-time and, and my uh, concern also was for weekends and evenings and he assured me that 24-7 uh, they would have an individual there either on site or immediately available. And so we talked about everything from self-service fueling and different types of things like that and maintenance and everything because I'm familiar with that and, and you have to have people available uh, if you're going to run a full-time airport and especially based upon some of the past history where we've kind of gotten a bad reputation. Now we're trying to restore that. And so I want to make sure that we not only restore it, but enhance it so that we can continue to grow out there. Thank you. OK, sounds good. Looks like you have support to go forward with uh, the planet here you have in place. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council. Next is we have the phased retirement option agreement with PRA, Mr. Peterson. Mayor Kelvin, members of the council, uh, this matter is back before you because of the timing of some pending retirements. <laughs> I understand that this matter was before the council for a brief discussion in early October at a meeting I was unable to attend. And the reason that we talked internally about bringing it back to the council is because we need to take a serious look at some succession planning options. And if the council would approve the use of the phased retirement option, PERA requires that we have council approval and file with PERA prior to using it. And with employees that are pushing up against retirement, there are two different <coughs> notices that they can file with PERA. One of them is if the city offers the phased retirement option, and the other one is if they don't. So these employees are waiting to find out exactly what direction the council chooses to ultimately go on this matter. I don't think it's any secret that the city has really struggled at times to replace key personnel, and succession planning has been discussed. We've uh, done some things at the department had an administrative level, but there's never been any program that's been implemented formally by the council. Now we have several staff members that we know will be retiring in the next five years. The PRO agreement would allow the transition into retirement for the employee and provide the city with a planning tool that can help transfer knowledge. Um, the PRO option allows the city to contract with a departing employer, retiring employee for up to 1,044 hours annually. And it allows the city to continue their operations without interruption and uh, strain on the rest of the staff where we may need to redistribute the workload. It also provides for the continuation of good public services as the city looks to hire for difficult to fill positions. I think it's really important to remember that the city does not have to use it for every position uh, that a retiring employee leaves. It does provide the option to maintain coverage of the position until it does get filled, and that position can also assist in training of new employees. There really aren't any issues for the city in that the city has full discretion as to who they would agree to keep on the uh, hours of work for the retiree as well as the length of the contract. There are no um, major financial impacts for most employees, um, except for the time that there would be overlap after uh, a position was actually filled. I, what I'd like to use as an example is the building official. Due to the qualifications of our current building official, the city has delegation agreements with the state of Minnesota 
that allows the city to issue permits for and inspect public and institutional facilities. Eligibility for those agreements will end when that employee leaves in March of 2018. Over the past two years, permit fees for those types of projects have yielded revenue in excess of one quarter million dollars to the city of Wilmer. Looking ahead, projects have already been identified for 2018 that will create over 35,000 in revenue, revenue that the city will not have without the PRO agreement. We anticipate that there will be closer to double that amount in revenue with public projects next year. We're still waiting to see what's all coming in from the state of Minnesota. The part-time position would pay for itself and it will also assist another staff person in gaining the qualifications to get that delegation authority or to keep the delegation authority for the city. Um, the PRO also reduces the city's cost of transitioning new employees following retirement. At the staff level, we think that the pair of PRO, the phase retirement option, is a good option for the council to look at. It's not a tool that has to be used for every position, but uh, short term, I think we're looking at some positions that can really uh, provide financial benefit and an experiential benefit back to the city if we are able to retain those people on a part-time basis while we continue or while we uh, embark on a search for their replacements. We're not looking at these positions to substitute for hiring to fill the positions. We're, we're looking at them strictly as transitional and being able to uh, use the positions when it makes good economic sense for the city to do so. So the last time this was before the council, the, the concern was that we would delay the search process. So Mr. Holland, can you talk a little bit about that as far as, I mean, if we put this in place, are we still gonna follow the normal uh, search process for filling positions or are we gonna delay those or how, how, do, how do you see that as the administrator being a management function? I, I think this is a, a tool that if we approve this, it will give uh, myself and staff that option, but it would never uh, be a reasoning or a rationale to delay in hiring um, because there's no rational decision to do that. The only reason that I would use this is like uh, uh, Bruce has stated, it would be for the purposes of you know training someone during that transition period or used if we have not filled that position. But uh, just like with uh, the upcoming, um, you know, inspector leaving, we will uh, go ahead and put out that position for hire, you know, at the appropriate time, whether it's 30 or 60 days out, and start the search and start the interviews. And if we get somebody in place before he, uh, he or she leaves, then we will do so. And so to me, um, you know, there's no cost to this program. It doesn't cost the city anything. We don't have to use that. Uh, you know, if um, someone comes to me and they, uh, you know, want to uh, use this program, I don't have to authorize it. Um, so I, I, I kind of liked having that option. And uh, like I said, I would never use that as an excuse uh, or rationale to delay it in hiring. Because as Bruce <coughs> said, we, we need to look at the, you know, replacing people in a timely manner. So Mr. Peterson, um, so the position that you've identified here is the building official position. Um, and your search up to this point, um, is it your feeling that that position is going to be difficult to fill, uh, even if the council would give some overlap time? And then the follow-up to that is that it says that we're going to use this position then to train the current individual that we have there. So these individuals have been working together a number of years. So why by having this agreement in place would it allow for that transition succession planning where it hasn't been done over the past X number of months or years? Two, part, two questions. I probably should have asked them once at a time. Two good questions. Um, the market for building officials, certified building officials in Minnesota is extremely tight. To find a building official that has the 
education and experience that would qualify them to uh, receive a delegation agreement or delegation authority from the state of Minnesota is going to be extremely rare? Uh, that's the answer to the first question. The second question is that um, Randy has been uh, bringing the building inspector along and giving him more authority as his knowledge increases over the years, but you have to demonstrate multiple years of track records on, a, on multiple major uh, commercial, industrial, institutional projects in order to get that delegation authority and the building official has not, or the building inspector has not had the exposure to all of those large projects just because his position has been primarily focused on residential and the rental inspections. Thank you. And then how about our HR director? What's your position on this? And then we'll bring it to the council. Or maybe I've already asked too many questions. I'm in full agreement with this because, like everybody has been saying, we need a succession tool and we need um, the ability to use it if we want to. Right now, um, we're sitting not being able to use this with a retiree, and this is specifically for retirees. Thank you. Council? Councilmember Schwantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My thought is that if we do not approve it, it is not available. If we do approve it, at least it's a tool that is out there. Otherwise, we're going to have to, if we, if we find ourselves in a position where we need to take advantage of it, we're going to have to start this all over again. So th there's no harm in, in approving it, and I think it gives us a tool to be able to work with it. Councilmember Fagerly, followed by Meske. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's more or less like an insurance policy. If we need it, we have it. But maybe now is the time that we talk with the county about merging with them or uh, what kind of a fee cut we could get from them if they take it over. So. Thank you. Councilman Maskey. Thanks. Um, just the dynamics of how it would work. Uh, if we were to, as I agree with everything that's been said so far, if you were to move forward with this kind of a plan, um, is the approval process and that all done by the city administrator and then it's passed on to the council? What's the process to implement it? And does it return to the council? Because, I mean, we talk about it's no cost, but truly the way we're going to use it, there is a cost of that overlap time. And I don't know, does the council get to chime in if there's going to be overlap time and a higher expenditure on the budget? Mr. Holland? My understanding would be, just like with uh, other full-time employees, that decision uh, authority would be mine. But I would also tell you that if I were to do that with a building official, I wouldn't do it without telling the council that's what I'm proposing to do. It's, it just makes sense that any retiree that we're going to retain past their normal retirement uh, procedures that I would come back to the council and say this is what I'm proposing to do. So I would do that. And are you ever anticipating, because we're talking about 131 eight-hour days with the maximum, mm -hmm. which seems a very long overlap time that could be kind of expensive. So It, it could be. And so... Normally, would you use that? No. I, any department that comes to me with a proposal will have to have that, a proposal, and show me a definite time why the, we have the need, uh, how we're going to use that time, and how many hours it's going to take to uh, fulfill that. And if it doesn't seem practical, then either I'll uh, you know, uh, tweak it uh, downward generally uh, and then uh, bring it to the council. Councilmember Alvarado. Um, I, I believe you answered some of my concerns. I would hope that we would have a window of the length of time and not just leave it open because the, the purpose would be to hire someone to take that position and not just keep on renewing, renewing, renewing. That's not the intent of this. So I would uh, hope that we'd have a minimum window to work with. Right, and and I've been in other states where you didn't even have this requirement uh, or this type of procedure. You know, you hire someone, oh, I'll keep you on half time, and oh, we're going to do that for six months. Uh, three years later, <laughs> someone says, why is Charlie still on the job? You know, that kind of thing. So right. I, I don't want to get caught in that type of situation. We'd have to have <laughs> some, you know, definite understanding with that person. Look, we're going to bring you on for three months. You're going to work these certain hours, 
And then after that, then we're done. You know, that kind of thing. So everybody has an understanding, and if they don't want to comply with that, then, you know, it won't work. But I agree with you. We can't have it open-ended because then it's, you know, I just need three more months, and, you know, I need to, you don't want to get in that situation. Yeah, I, 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 I um, agree with what you're saying. I just don't want that to become a crutch. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Councilman <coughs> Plumman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, on, on the surface, it sounds like a good idea with the proper uh, checks and balances, and, and if we know the process that's going to be in place, um, sounds sounds like a win-win. A, a I like it because it's a, a um, proactive way of going about things instead of a reactive way, and even though there, there could be or there would be some added expense, um, I would rather have that added expense rather than all of a sudden a vacancy that we don't know what the duration of that vacancy is going to be because there's a cost to that too um, and because there's duties that would have to be filled by others and that gets expensive too um, so i think this is a good measure of redundancy just like you would with computer systems you wouldn't uh, set up to shut down one uh, server the day that the next server is due to arrive right. you would uh, you'd put the other one in place and make sure it's up and functioning first and so i think that's a i think it's a good proactive measure I'm not sure that example is a good example when you think of the state of Minnesota and their <coughs> vehicle registration. I, so I, I'm still waiting on two titles. <laughs> yeah, I'm, my wife's waiting on uh, tabs for her car for since July, mm -hmm. and they still don't have them. Mr. Peterson, I'd just like to respond to Councilmember uh, Fagerly's comments about taking a look at combining with the county. There is no one with the county and no one that operates in this county or the surrounding counties with the exception of Stearns County that I believe has delegation authority right now. Um, the counties around us, including Canyon High County, whenever they get a major commercial, industrial, or institutional project, those plans get sent to the state of Minnesota. The state of Minnesota reviews those plans. The state of Minnesota <coughs> keeps all the fees for reviewing those plans and issuing the permits. And then the state of Minnesota uh, continues to reward the county by providing bad service when it comes to calling for inspections and getting inspectors out here to keep projects on a schedule. And internally, we pride ourselves on keeping contractors on a schedule. We don't, we don't cotton to delay in any fashion. And our inspectors are readily available at all times. And, uh, the, de the developers and the contractors in this community have gotten to expect that and they're rewarded with that good service and we, we think that it's important to have someone with that delegation authority on city staff to continue to provide that level of service. Thank you. So any more comments about the phased retirement option? Uh, Mr. Holland, you told me this was time sensitive. Is it the request of staff to move that forward? It is, Mayor. Is council okay with moving it forward? With that, we'll move that forward. Next is the initial body camera purchase request from Chief Felt. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, item before you for your consideration tonight is the request to authorize initial purchase of body cameras for the Wilmer Police Department. As you know, uh, this body camera project has been uh, in the works for a number of years now. Um, and after several delays uh, due to legislative needs and that type of thing, um, we are ready to move forward with an initial purchase of body cameras. Uh, in this current year's budget, $17,000 was budgeted for the purchase of body cameras, uh, for uh, the partial purchase of what we need for body cameras. Um, after receiving a bid from the WatchGuard company, which we went through uh, because it meshes with our current squad car cameras, software, um, hardware needs, um, that type of thing. Um, the uh, bid came in, or the, uh, excuse me, the, uh, um, the, the, uh, the amount came in at $16,054, which fits into the current budget year, and just uh, looking for re uh, approval to purchase those cameras uh, this year. Okay. Um, I did listen to you on open mic on <coughs> Wednesday. You did a nice job of explaining it there. So Thank you. Um, I really like the plan that you're putting out there for how you're going to roll this out to the public, how you're going to have that public input uh, piece. I believe you said you're going to have at least two public meetings. Correct. 
that's our plan with that uh, we are required to have at least one public meeting by a state statute and dealing with body cameras to talk about the policy uh, right now we have a committee of officers at our department that are putting together a rough framework of a policy we'll have our public meetings meet again uh, mesh some uh, policy um, uh, wording that way then it does come in front of the City Council for approval um, this is one of the uh, by state statute um, the City Council has to approve the body camera policy and then if once approved there then it's uh, the training of our officers and putting it into effect thank you and then um, just a question for me and I, I know that you have it in the 2018 budget for purchasing the other half is there any advantage if we were to purchase all of them at one time would there be a price break or uh, hasn't that been vetted yet you know we we didn't go real in depth with that just because I knew the the limitations of this year's budget um, and uh, the same request for the same amount of funds have been put in for next year from talking with the uh, the vendor on this there may be some but I don't feel it'd be a, a large amount to go, to do it all at once council council member Schwantes actually just a quick thought that ran through my mind and he read my face I guess <laughs> but it would make sense that if there is a discount in 2018 is right here just to go ahead and turn it around and include both years in the budget councilmember Osmus I agree uh, given the culture of um, the expectation I think of the public now of what they they want and uh, for investigations and and for calls and uh, explanations of what happened at calls um, if we couldn't find it in the 2017 budget and things got tight for the 2018 budget funny that it's about the same amount for a robot <laughs> And if I had to choose between body cameras on the officers and the robot, I'm definitely going with the body cameras. Um, that, that's going to get used every day, and it's, it's going to get utilized. Mr. Wilkins, did you have a comment you wanted to make? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the council has advanced uh, two items already out of the 18 budget, so right. there are mechanisms in place that if that's the choice of the council, uh, we could... Uh, account for that accordingly thank you and my understanding is this is not time sensitive tonight and so what we could do is we could maybe get the answers to some of those questions as to whether there would be a discount or not and then you could bring that back when it goes to the full council because my understanding this is not time sensitive correct I guess I would uh, um, maybe ask on that because of uh, the uh, 2017 budget having $17,000 um, set aside that's why it was brought forward tonight to thinking that it might be time sensitive but if not mr. mayor members of council the charter does require that uh, operating appropriations expire at the end of the year but you can take action prior to that time and uh, carry that forward by council action correct because I mean it would be approved on it would the way it looks it would be approved on the 18th so does that meet the timeline yes sir Okay, someone, do we want to move it forward or don't we? Yes. Yep. Okay. Are you okay if we move it forward? Just so I understand correctly, to get an updated bid for the number of body cameras that we need and come back to the council with that, is that correct? Correct, but I believe you probably got a quote this time, and so yes. is, are, are we running up against anything on the quote, Mr. Wilkins? I believe uh, doubling the quoted amount that's in your uh, community, uh, or Committee action form would still uh, have it fall within the quoting system, so you just have to get a new quote. You would not have to bid it. Thank you. I think I've seen a hand over here. Did that answer that question? Councilmember Osmus. Thank you, Mayor. When will we know if there's enough money in the 2017 budget to cover the additional other half? Uh, Mr. Okins told us that it's there. Okay. So, so we do have the money. So what do you say? Okay. Uh, Councilmember Schwantes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There have been a number of things put out. I think it's by either the coalition or else the league talking about body cameras and issues in regard to them. And there have been some articles about how much more time it takes 
from the um, county attorney's office to be able to process all of that information if there are you know issues or events. Have you um, just, I, I, I'm assuming you're aware of all of that and have we had any conversations with the county attorney's office just to let them know that we we're considering something like this? We have. Um, at least quarterly, we have criminal justice meetings where it's uh, the uh, judges, county attorney, city attorney, uh, prosecutor's office, defense attorney's office, and this has been brought up there before the plans and eventually what uh, will happen there. So we've tried to work within all the different systems to let them know what's coming and the time constraints that will come with it and expenses and that type of thing too. That doesn't surprise me you'd have that answer. <laughs> Thank you. It's always great because our police chief always has the answers to any question we can come up with. You're always prepared. I appreciate that. So I'll try. You do a very good right job. Thank so, you. Yes, yes. We're lifting you up on that pedestal again, so don't don't knock it down. Yes, sir. <laughs> we are so fortunate to have a great police department. Uh, you guys do a great job. So keep up the good work. Next on the agenda is the Western Interceptor Storm Sewer Phase One project. Our Public Works Director, Mr. Christensen. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. In front of you, as promised, is the uh, Western Interceptor Storm Sewer Project. This would, uh, there's a lot of um, description in that car form, but basically this connects the uh, pond, ponds near uh, Baker Field to the outfall that goes uh, eventually into Hawk Creek. We solicited proposals from, and received them from multiple firms, and the recommendation is to award the project which includes uh, preliminary and final design bidding, construction services, and project management services to Bolton and Mink for $169,890. And you, can you remind us what we had placed in the budget for that? 2017 capital program included 150 for this phase, 150,000. Um, however, in the proposal, it requests that the uh, part of the design services explore and investigate grant sources for these for this project and so I'm confident that between grant sources the 150,000 that's in there and uh, what's proposed in 2018 for the uh, construction that we'll have the funds to cover that okay council council member Meski so we are bar are we going to um 150 is out of 17. Are we then having encumbered another 19,890 for the 2018? I think what I heard him say is he's going to try to get grants to cover that. I understand, but it has, we don't have. <coughs> we would be moving those funds out of the 2018 budget. Correct. Well, well you, the reality you, is it's all going to be 2018 budget at this point. Right. So um, this 150 would be pushed forward, and I see the finance director shaking his head a little bit. So. Maybe he'll correct me, but uh, my understanding was that the 150 would be pushed forward into 18 for this design phase of this project, and then combined with, in lack of a better terms, the construction funds or the phase two of this project, and then uh, we'd have to see how the bids come in and, and make a decision at that point. I think what we'd do is it would take the 150 from the 2017 budget mm -hmm. that was allocated under capital, and so that would be expended under 2017, I think is what the city finance director saying, and then the additional monies would just either be taken out of PIR or taken out of um, the 2018 budget. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if you sign a contract prior to the end of the year obligating the city to the 169, you really should have the funding in place. Right. So what we could do is we could say 150 that's currently budgeted, uh, 19,890 out of PIR, and then uh, offset by any grants that we receive. <coughs> right? And this needs to move forward too because of time sensitivity. So, Councilmember Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know we're a ways out. Do we have a, a rough construction estimate in, so as to make an approximate guess of what percentage um, the soft costs are going to be of the project itself? Councilmember Plowman, you know, I did a rough estimate on that, and that's in the 2018 capital, and I don't have that in front of me right now. And I did the percentage on this, too, and I want to say that it's in the uh, 12 to 13 or 14 percent range. Okay, thank you. So Councilmember Fangerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
So do we have to buy any more right away or easements, or we don't know yet? Uh, Councilmember Fagley, that we the short answer is we don't know yet. Um, we're anticipating having the current the correct easements and right of ways available, but uh, that's a possibility. So we can't just go where the existing one is and dig it up and go about four or five feet deeper. <laughs> if, if four or five feet bigger. If, if we do, um, we will be buying easements and right away. So we'll we'll have to explore those options. All right. Thanks. Okay. So uh, I'm seeing consensus to move that forward as well. Okay. Um, I believe that tonight's agenda probably has ran more consistent with how our city administrator thought a couple of the earlier meetings would have ran. So um, as you see, we're about a half hour ahead. Um, Councilmember Osmus, did I see that you had something? Um, if, if we have some time, can I bring up an item? Sure. <laughs> I'm yeah, looking, towards, I'm it's looking up at to our, the mayor. I mean, I'm looking at our city attorney because this is not a, work a this, this is not a specially called meeting. It's a regularly published meeting, so anything could be added to the agenda. That's this correct. is my understanding of the open meeting law. That is correct. Okay, Councilmember Osmus. Um, I I would was wondering if we could um, talk about the park plan and the Miller Park email that we got about the funds. Did that all make sense to you? The, I had some questions on the email about the funds that went into Miller Park and the replacement of the playground equipment um, and the breakdown of all of it. What we'd asked is for the city administrator to give a recap at the, at the regular meeting, but he certainly could do it now, oh, understanding that it. he's going to have to do that at the regular meeting too. That is so at, just at, fine. at the work session, we asked him to bring that forward, send it to us, and then give a, a brief recap. Okay, I didn't see that meeting. on the agenda. So it, it's not on the agenda, but okay. we so asked I him to do that, okay. so he's probably going to do that during his comments, I would guess. Then I think that, that, that was asked for him to fine. do. Okay. Uh, we talked about that at the work session, is to bring that forward. Uh, right, and, and I sent that this afternoon. Is it the, the document you're referring to is the one I sent this afternoon? No, I'm, I, okay, maybe that's a different the one. Earlier I'm one, at the one from November 28th. No, that. No, there's one sent today. Okay. There was one sent this afternoon because I, I met with um, Steve and last week and I talked to him about it and um, I felt like that maybe a, um, a chart would be more understandable oh. okay. than the narrative that he provided. Ah. And so I sent that out um, this afternoon and. I don't have a copy of it with me. Do you have it with you? Well, I see there's Steve? a thing on the legacy grant that email. No, it's not the legacy grant. It's uh, the one that says FYI only, no action required, playground, Miller Park funds. I can, Steve, do you have it up? You want to go over it? I, I oh. think we could save some time since we have the time available, if, if you don't mind. Right. Who? So, um, okay. basically, at, it's got the numbers just a in second. front of you. Sorry, Julie. I got it. Uh, it came at 3.39 this yes. afternoon. Okay. okay, I see it. So I sent this ahead, out. Um, so the council in their August uh, resolution reappropriating funds from the Swan Swanson Field Project put $90,800 into playground equipment. They also dedicated in, at that same, on that same resolution, they also dedicated 40 of $150,000 to the Miller Park Project for playground equipment. Those two numbers total $130,800. Staff have purchased $70,691.46 worth of playground equipment. We have encumbered the installation costs for next spring to, for the three units and two extra pieces of equipment that we purchased with that $70,000. The cost of that installation next, next spring will be $30,594. Public work staff will put work into um, where these playgrounds are placed. They'll purchase concrete to do a um, curbing around the playground equipment. They'll purchase mulch, so the manufactured mulch that will be the top surface. They'll also purchase some fabric to put underneath the mulch to keep the uh, vegetation from growing through. Um, 
That's estimated to be about $20,000. We won't know until they purchase all, all the product that they need. Uh, thus, what's either expended or estimated to be expended out of that $130,800 is $121,285.46, leaving non-committed funds at this point of $9,514.54. Given the, the um, uh, connection between the Miller Park project, I've, I've put the Miller Park information on the same document. We had $220,000 in 2017 CIP funds for this project. At the August uh, council meeting, the uh, reappropriation of dollars from Swanson Field were the 110,000 that would go into the Miller Park tennis court portion of the project with the other 40,000 B playground equipment. We've received a USTA grant for $10,000. Thus, the money available for the Miller Park project to date is $340,000. We've got a potential $20,000 grant with USTA uh, that has been submitted and we'll know by the end of the year whether or not that's awarded. Expended so far um, on Miller Park, um, not expended but encumbered, is the SRF consulting contract of $31,972. We are entering into an agreement. Uh, the contract's not back and signed by parties yet, but uh, with Dunnick Incorporated for 298, 219.61. Thus, we've encumbered uh, expenses of 330, 191.61. Um, which is tight when you look at the $340,000 available and any um, potential change orders or, or uh, contingencies that are, are unknown at this point. Thus, we don't know the $9,500 of playground equipment uh, not committed at this time. Uh, we think it's the wise thing to leave those funds and is why we didn't purchase another $9,500, uh, just to make sure that we've got some extra resources in case something took place at Miller. And obviously, if that USTA grant is approved, that $20,000 will help us because that would put us at about a 10% 10, 10 contingency fund for that project, which is on the low end if you talk to our engineer, um, but at least it's, uh, it's, it's available to us if things come up with that project. Now I'd stand for questions. Councilman Meski. If you could, what did, what did we get for the 70700 uh, for equipment purchased? We received two 512 units. We, we purchased a two to five ages, that is the five, um, age five to 12 units. Uh, we, received, we also purchased a two to five unit. We, were, uh, we, received, we purchased a extra swing set and a balance beam piece of equipment for the $70,000. How much is that is going into Miller Park? Um, a 512 unit's going to Miller Park, the two five units going to Miller Park, the swing set and the balance beam are going to Miller Park. That leaves one unit that will be placed in another park uh, to be, de be determined. I assume we'll come back to the council um, after looking at the presentation that Justin from Public Works presented. Um, and then you guys are fielding phone calls from the community where we'd like to place that other unit next spring, um, early summer, and then uh, pending what takes place um, regarding the 2018 budget, we do know that uh, right now the mayor's budget has a um, $100,000 um, in that budget for um, playground equipment in 18. Thank you. So, Steve. Um, the monies that would be left potentially, you'll keep those into placing additional playgrounds if we don't spend all the money? Is that your plan? Uh, if that's what the council uh, would like us to do, that, that's, that's a possibility for us, obviously, because 9,500 of that is um, earmarked for playground equipment. Because if, if you look at the two numbers, then potentially, if we do accept that USTA grant, there would be about 30000 there, just shy of 30000 and about 9000 should have about 39000 um, You know, the direction that council gave was that they wanted to bring those playgrounds whole, as I recall, as much as possible. 
So would that be your intent or would your intent be something else? No, that would be our intent right now and, and most likely in the piece work, not units. So we would probably purchase swing sets and, and balance beams and other <coughs> mirror rounds or whatever it might be instead of units um, the, like the large units that we, we've purchased thus far. But obviously we'll bring that back to the council for any decisions once the Miller Park projects. That's got a wrap-up date of July 31st. Correct. Council Member Fagerly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Steve, I want to put dibs on that last piece of equipment for Sunrise Park. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mayor, I'll let you guys uh, wrestle that one. So, Rick, that's not to me. That's to the rest of the people at the table with you. How's that sound? <laughs> well, you have a better chance tonight because we have two council members missing, so start wrestling. <laughs> Make a break. This ought to be fun. <laughs> Keep the camera rolling. <laughs> okay, Councilmember uh, Alvarado. Uh, Apologize. Uh, I would ask that you also work with your um, your um, your board, the Park Board, uh, for suggestions as far as recommendations as to where the equipment goes. We met on Friday, and that was the discussion that we had that we'd bring that back to them in uh, January, February. And uh, after them having that discussion, bring it to the council table. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. I, I would add that the equipment that we did purchase, um, Justin and Gary Manzer from Public Works and myself met with, um, I think, five or six community members, uh, most of them daycare providers in the um, Miller Park, Jefferson Learning Center area um, that we know utilize the parks quite a bit um, with their children. And uh, they provided some great input into this purchase. So I, I think uh, that's the type of uh, input we'd like to see on other purchases like this as well. So they did a great job picking out equipment. Okay, sounds good. Is there anything else that the council would wish to talk about for the next 20 minutes? Otherwise, we'll break. Council Member Fagley. Just another question, Mr. Mayor. So was the council meeting last time, was that live? No. Okay, that's why I couldn't find it then. Right. I was on the couch waiting to watch it. On the couch? That's where I belong. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> I'm retired, not you. Yeah, it wasn't live, and the reason it was is because we're at the Health and Human Services, oh. and they didn't have the ability to go live. So, okay. yeah, I received a number of phone calls on on Monday night and then also Tuesday morning why it wasn't there. Yeah, so, so did I, and I said and I couldn't find it either. I mean, we had put it on our Facebook that it wasn't going to be live, that we were going to, it was going to be tape delayed, but so I apologize for that. So with that, we'll stand adjourned until the meeting at 7 o'clock. Huh. Didn't mean to jump your agenda there, Mr. Holland. Didn't mean to jump your agenda.